So here's the top 10 ways to cheat while making foam tombstones or sculpts. Number 10, design. It's easy to just start cutting out your stone shape out of the foam board, but it's better to cheat by going the Google route. Sit in front of your computer and ideate. I always just ask a person I'm making a tombstone for to just give me a theme. That's it. Chris had picked Captain Daniel. Type that into the computer. Hunt and pack, and voila, there's a Captain Daniel. Had to embellish his story a bit to make him more piratish. But remember, this is about cheating. Okay, got material for an epitaph. Now for the actual design of the stone. Google the word pirate and write down those piratey items that come up from your search. A ship, cutlass, treasure, and the like. Now your brain has something to think about. Additionally, you can go to a hobby store and roam the aisles with your mind saying over and over again, piratey, piratey. <laughs> now here's the key. Wait a couple of days. Our devious little mind once set upon a quest becomes a little demon in its tenacity to solve that problem. It will come up with some amazing ideas if you give it the time. You will know when you hit upon something cool because at that moment, you can't wait to start. Everyone calls it the aha moment. Sit down and write on grid paper your idea and work out how wide, tall, etc. to scale. Now, cut out your styrofoam. All right, number nine, challenge yourself. Now, how's this cheating? Because this is the fastest way to create said jaw-dropping props. If you take the easier route, in the long run, you're gonna spend way more time easing yourself into trying new things. So belly up to that bar and take the whole shot at once. Don't know how to carve a pirate ship? Well, try anyway. With the other cheats we'll be going over, you will succeed. You just have to go to the edge of that cliff and go for it. But trust me, it's fun. Building cutting edge props gives you a shot of adrenaline like a roller coaster ride. It gets addicting and fun. Yes, it's scary to stand in front of $226 worth of pink foam and make that first cut for a hellhound. But damn, once you steal yourself and just start, it's flipping fun. Plus, wine does help. <laughs> I know you've heard this, but it's true. The best carving advice ever given to me by my idol, Scourge, from Skull Shop, carve away what doesn't belong. Number eight, focal points and suggestions. Foam carving is a time-consuming process. Cheat when you can. Use the knowledge that a viewer of your prop will help you here. Say you're carving a demon horse. What's the first place you'd look at when looking at a demon horse? His head, right? Horns, and probably in particular his eyes. So spend your time carving that head to be as realistic as possible. For the rest of the body? Yeah, get the proportions right, but don't spend extra time if you don't have it making the skin texture perfect. The viewer isn't looking at it anyway. But don't completely ignore the other areas, and that leads me to suggestions. You don't want to spend a lot of time making the horse's skin cool, but can you cheat? Sure. Remember when you've looked at a stallion or saw one in a movie? Did you notice that they have bulging veins on their neck and body? Make those by monster mudding some yarn on. If you suggest to the viewer that the horse has rippling veins and muscles, that's all you need. You will see that it is a powerful horse just by seeing those veins and a couple of carved ridges into the body for rippling muscles. But in reality, they're looking solely at the head, so save your time. Number seven, scale models, projectors, and monster mud. If you aren't that good of a sculptor, cheat like I do. Use a scale model for large carves. Pictures are nice, but a 3D scale model, that's the biggest cheat out there. You kind of know what a scorpion looks like, but you've never stared at one in your hand from all angles. So find a good scale model of the monster you're creating. Look at toy stores, especially those action figures. With all the comics, games, books, movies, there is a toy that can help you see your monster 3D in your hand. You can use it to see the direction and scale the parts of your monster while you sculpt. You can even take pictures of it and blast it onto the foam board using a projector and trace it out. Cheating! For tombstones, you can go even further. Don't sculpt little items on the stone. 
Find more toys or items and monster mud them directly onto your stone. Why carve it when you can monster mud it? You can use a Barbie for an angel. Toy spiders, lizards, bugs, snakes, chicken bones, feathers, plastic swords, skulls. You get the idea. Number six, study the real thing. Why create it when you can copy it? Don't know how to replicate lichen to give your stone that ancient look? Well, go outside and stare at some. What are the colors? All right, well, it's white, cream, black. There's really dark green in there. All right, what's the texture? Well, it's stubbly and a little fan-shaped. Take a picture of it, print it out, and have it next to the tombstone. Then wander around your workshop and look at the tools and stuff that you have on how to replicate it. How about tissue paper dipped in white paint and placed on the stone and wrinkled up a little bit? Uh, after it dries, I could sponge on the other colors. You know, I haven't tried this yet, but you know I will for the next stone. <laughs> Number five, power tools. The great equalizer between men and women. Yes, ladies, even you can use power tools and they aren't as difficult to use as you think. For millennia, the knowledge of tools and engineering was kept secret between men and was handed down each generation from man to boy in what's called SMBC, Secret Man Beer Circle. But yes, with YouTube, the secrets are out and you can quickly watch how these marvels can take the tedious work of hand carving, cutting, you name it, out of the equation. Come ladies, explore the land of Dremels. Hot wire tools, jigsaws, even sawzaws. Every task you do, ask yourself, oh gosh, is there a quicker way to do this? <laughs> well, yes, there is. And soon you will also learn DTFE. Duct tape fixes everything. Do not, though, use their other secrets that they think works. The I I D H I W A H. If in doubt, hit it with a hammer or I-I-D-M-U-B-F. If it doesn't move, use brute force. <laughs> Number four, use the great destroyer. Acetone is your friend. Really? Yes, it's the stuff and spray paint that eats your foam in a deliciously awesome way. If you harness its destructive power, you can rule the... Tombstone. <laughs> Dip a round bristle brush in it and paint it on. Twist it in place so it makes a pinhole. Brush it over large areas to create an etched look. Brush it downwards to create the illusion of centuries of stone decay. Drips and brush strokes here and there and stand back and be amazed. Number three, dry lock. Gosh, I love that stuff. What else simultaneously colors our stone gray gives it a stone appearance, and makes it waterproof. But be sure to use that latex version and not the oil one, or a great destroyer, acetone, will munch away at your stone with no control. Get back in your box. Number two, dry brushing. What a cheat this is. When you combine the power of dry brushing with the sand particles and dry lock, you've got <laughs> centuries old stone, all with the easiest brush stroke ever, Plus, it's just fun to beat the hell out of your stone with a brush. Just think about that bratty tot last year that you couldn't smack some sense into and lay into your stone. It wasn't that scary. <laughs> Number one, numero uno, tea staining. You get to cheat Mother Nature. What took her decades, even centuries, you can do this in an hour's time of work. Yes, you have to wait between drying time, but you are replicating all those years of pollution and dirt that took forever to form in nature. And when you're done, your eyes are going to love you. You will see the centuries of pollution you always wanted to create right in front of you by cheating. Whew. 